Wow, Kelowna, this is so exciting. It's a total privilege to be here this evening at TEDx in 2015. I'm totally thrilled, and I hope you are too. I hope you had a great evening so far. You know, I'm here to give you four points to talk about how I overcome some obstacles, how I take an idea and, and start to move that idea forward. Those four points are, I believe, perfection can prevent progress. I, need, I believe that you need to talk about your project a lot, your idea a lot. I think you need to learn to focus on the future, not on the obstacle. And the final point is you need to learn to get committed. So I am excited to be here. I am Kelowna's geriatric adventurer. <laughs> and uh, literally, my goal tonight is to inspire you, to help, me, help you take that idea and move it forward. I do these big adventures, sometimes wild and crazy adventures, and the goal is that I can help a charity, Rally for Life, that my wife and I founded, just gain a few extra views, a few extra donations. So it's pretty cool. I want to share with you a quick story where I use those four points to inspire my kids, actually. My wife and I, a few years ago, we thought, Let's open up a restaurant. My youngest son was coming back from university, and he'd done an Asian studies degree, and we thought, well, let's mess him up completely. Let's show him what it's like to start a restaurant, and hopefully he'll get inspired. So we started a restaurant. I practiced all four points. I did what I preach. I didn't worry about perfection. The walls weren't painted very well. The equipment was broken. The furniture, some said, was eclectic. I think they were being polite. I didn't have a menu, but my wife's a good cook. Everybody knew that. Oh, I spoke a lot. I did that bit. Told all my friends, we're opening a restaurant. You need to come check it out. It's going to be awesome. And I committed. I opened the door, and there was all my friends. I was so excited. And then I took the first order to the kitchen. And it was a little like the birthing room where my second child was being born. <laughs> you know, you're that polite, concerned husband. Is there anything I can do to help you, honey? And after a head had spun around 360 degrees, I got that real guttural, possessed voice that said, why didn't we open next week? The day went on like that, me being thrilled, my wife being very unnice in the kitchen. <laughs> now, the restaurant worked okay, but I really don't think we inspired our children. I think we probably embarrassed them. So much so that they're now the proud owners of a, a Viking-themed nerd bar on Bernard Avenue in Kelowna here, and uh, hopefully they're, they're serving up a few TEDx cocktails or doing some TEDx food for you tonight, too, to celebrate the evening. So I used those principles. I was pretty excited. And I want to use that analogy of the flying car to really talk about these four points to show you how we can take what seems like a crazy idea and move it forward. Now, you might ask me, how did I get into thinking about a flying car project? Well, I grew up as a kid thinking that I want to be an astronaut, I want to be an RAF pilot, I want to be a soccer star, and everybody would say, yeah, when pigs might fly. And the truth is, at the end of the day, when we step out of our own way sometimes, our friends and family can be some of the inhibitors to our own progress. A little like my wife, perhaps, in the restaurant. Why don't we do it next week? Be careful, you might hurt yourself. They do it out of love. They want to protect you. But I want to talk to you a little bit about my first flying car adventure. It was in Cochrane, Alberta. I love rally racing. And I was in Cochrane on a winter rally. I had a new co-driver. Oh, we were so excited. We'd never raced together before. That relationship is pretty important in the car. I had to listen implicitly to the co-driver. I had to do what he told me, not what I could see on the road. And so if he said, turn right, and it looked like I was turning left, I would have to turn right. Well, on this particular day, he gave me a set of notes over a crest. I was coming up to a crest very quickly on an icy road. Couldn't see what was beyond it. And he told me, essentially, with his cryptic notes, that there was quite a bit of space, eh, moderately sharp left-hand turn. Well... As Ken told you in the very first talk tonight, I had my aha moment. I came over the crest and went, oh, sugar. <laughs> there was very little space, and there was a very sharp left turn, and usually not a big deal for a rally driver because there's rocks and trees, that stops us, and we can usually carry on. Well, here was a cliff that was intent on not stopping us. So I managed to turn my car around. I went over the, uh, the, uh, the actual crest at about 110 kilometers an hour. I ended up going over the cliff at about 70 kilometers an hour. Now, I have an angel that I'm writing a book about. It's called Bruised Angels. 
on all these adventures, I think when I get to heaven, there's going to be an angel with crutches and with bandages and bottled bottom glasses. And the angel is going to be saying to God, why didn't you just give me his wife? She just reads books. So I think that day the angel was there and put my car down carefully. All the trees were breaking. There was smoke everywhere. But tough people last. Tough times don't. And I knew in rally, when you're in trouble, you keep your foot hard on the floor because you may get out. Even though I was 50 foot below the road, I'm gripping the wheel. I'm looking out the window and my foot's hard on the floor. There's smoke coming everywhere out of the engine, off the wheels. My co-driver looks at me and says, it's probably a good time to brake. Now, that was my first experience with a flying car. I truly hope the next one is a little less dramatic and a little more successful. So let me tell you about these four points. The first point that I mentioned to you was perfection can prevent progress. Take a look, the Kitty Hawk. This is the Wright brothers in 1903. Was their goal to create a perfect aircraft? Doesn't look like it. Take a look at the one on the right. That'll get you there faster, quicker, higher, warmer, drier. But did they achieve their objective? Yes, they did. They flew. How cool is that? Tonight is a QED moment. QED, you're here. The founder of TEDx, if he'd just kept that idea in his head, you wouldn't be here. QED, you probably know the Latin for that. I can't even pronounce it, but it means here's the proof. Here's the proof. The Wright brothers put an aircraft in the air. Was it perfect? No. Look at this. The first computer, Bletchley Manor. There's a movie about this computer, right? This is in England, where I come from. Was it a perfect computer? Look at those knobs and dials and gadgets and wires. There's not as much power in there as there is in your wristwatch. But did it work? Yes. It heralded the end of the, first world war, the Second World War for us. It worked, but it was by no means perfect. Look at this fine bunch of guys. 1920s, picture this. Some guy called George Mallory gives you a call and says, we're going to go for a bit of a hike. So you put on a woolly shirt, put on a tie, because it's a bit chilly in the Himalayas, strap on the tweed jacket, hemp rope around the waist, pull on your hobnail boots, and we are going to go and try and climb a mountain, boys. Is that a picture of perfection? Not compared to the state-of-the-art Arcteryx equipment we can wear today. The ergonomic black diamond ice axes. You know, I think that the adventures of the future are rooted in these true traditional challenges of the past. How cool would that be? Terrifying. I wouldn't want to do it at all. But they didn't let that get in the way. They moved forward and they started to conquer mountains. So don't let perfection get in your way. Point number two, talk about your idea. I love this. Do you know your inner mind is a muscle? And you need to program that muscle. Now, some of you probably go to success seminars, and you probably read PMA books. What do they say in the mornings when you get up and you look in your bathroom mirror? You should write on there in the evening. Should you write, today's going to be a waste of time because I'm a total loser? <laughs> of course not, because we program our minds. We program our minds by the audible word, and so when I tell people, I'm going to try and fly a flying car around the world, my mind says, man, he's a nutcase, but here we go again. It'll open up some doors for me. And what I find is you come back to me and you go, how is that flying car project going? And it reminds me, oh dear, I committed him. That's my wife. Oh no, <laughs> he's committed himself. I can hear her already. She's in here somewhere. Oh my gosh, he's committed himself. That is so fundamentally important. But here's the other cool serendipity. When you start talking to people about your idea, people want to help you. So in the process of talking about my flying car project, I've connected with an Apache attack helicopter pilot. He's flown the Atlantic. That's a stretch of water I've got to fly over. He's done it. I can ask for his advice. I've connected with a gentleman who's just finished trying to fly a gyroplane around the world. Man, he's got a ton of advice I can get. A meteorologist who says, wow, what a cool adventure. Can I share my advice with you about weather patterns around the world? That would never have happened if I hadn't started talking a lot about my project. So remember, go tell it on the mountain. Talk about your project. My third point is that you need to focus on the future. And this is where I've lost you all. Because you're looking at that and you're wondering, if, is there a flying car in there? Is there a flying pig in there? Is it a picture of Mark? 
Well, let me tell you the answer, because the challenge is just like the problems that we will face when we step out in faith and start to work on our idea, is we look at the problem. The goal is not to look at that. The goal is to look beyond that. And then the picture will come into focus. Some people get it. Some people don't. But it happens with our problems. We get a problem. We start focusing on it. It looks like the rear end of an elephant. It looks huge. But if we focus on the finishing line, it puts it into perspective, doesn't it? So you need to learn to focus on the future. It's fundamentally important for you to learn how to solve those problems by looking at where you want to go to. You've heard those stories this evening about getting to that finishing line. And here's my favorite point, getting committed. Can you get committed, Kelowna? Can you get committed? I sure hope so. This looks terrifying, doesn't it? Doesn't that look crazy? You're probably thinking that those guys are just terrified. I will tell you in my experience, not from base jumping, but from paragliding and racing cars, that is the most peaceful moment for them. Now they're doing their job. They have a singular focus. Getting up to that point, it's chaos. For these guys, it's probably organizing sponsorship deals, talking to the media. It's, a, it's chaos. When I take my rally car to a race, behind me and beside me is chaos. And I'm just looking at three lights, a red, an amber, and a green. When that light goes green, my heart rate goes down because of all the stress is gone. Now I just need to race. But what do you do when we talk about commitment? Oh my God, this is going to be so hard. I can't believe what's going to happen. If I commit, it's going to be terrifying. It seems that way, but trust me, it's not. Several years ago, I was in Alberta and I was a whitewater rafting guide. And we had a contract to train the British Army. And on this particular day, what we had them do is to jump into a recirculating hole in the water to start the day off. It was called the Widowmaker. That's terrifying enough, just the name. And it was a whirlpool, and it would suck you down to the bottom of the river. And somewhere, later on, you'd get pulled up. And we'd have guides on the river. They'd kind of help you if you got into trouble. But it was a tough challenge. And so we had these young soldiers, 17, 18 year old, year old. They, were, they were kids, really. But they're training to go fight for their country. And so these young soldiers were jumping in the water. And then there was one young guy who wasn't going anywhere. He was just sitting on the rock. And I wondered what was going on, so I walked up, and as I walked up, I noticed that there's mud stains all down his cheeks. This brave young soldier is sitting on this rock in front of me, crying. A guy who's about to go to Afghanistan, a guy who's about to go to Iraq, a guy who's about to do crazy, crazy things, but he's only 17 or 18. And I sat down next to him, and I said, what's up? And he looked me through these tear-stained eyes. He looked at me straight in the face, and he said, Mister, I ain't never swam before. Mister, I ain't never swam before. Have you got an excuse that good? I certainly don't. Can you imagine being that young guy? Mister, I ain't never swam before. And here I am looking at this horrible, gurgling whirlpool in the water. All I can say is, you don't have any choice. Today you go. And he's upset. He knows he's let his team down. So piece by piece, the puzzle comes together in his head. And finally he jumps in the water. Well, out of the water came a lion, full of guts and glory. Later on he got his own back on me because I had to demonstrate cliff jumping. I hate cliff jumping. So I climbed up the rock 40 or 50 feet. I gave my safety talk. And I realized I had to commit. I had to do this. Can you get committed? Have you got an excuse as good as that tonight? Are you able to commit to your idea? Thank goodness TEDx did. That's why we're here. Let me share with you my office, 2017. There she is, the flying car. I'm so thrilled. We leave San Francisco, at least the plan. We arrive back in Kelowna with a world record. How cool is that? It's going to be so exciting. You were told tonight the theme, Ignite. All change was born of an idea. Can you understand that 
your idea doesn't need to be perfect? Does that make sense? It doesn't have to be perfect. Can you talk a lot about your idea? Can you do that for me? Can you make sure that you overcome those challenges? Keep your eye on the finish line. And can you guys, can you commit? Can you commit, Kelowna? I sure hope you've been inspired tonight. <laughs> That's our goal as speakers. I want to hear all of those cool ideas that from tonight actually happened. Something. Stay in touch. Let me know what happened. I've got some homework for you. I want you to do one thing tonight. When you go home, you've got all these ideas. You haven't done anything with them yet. I want you to promise me one thing, because we know everything starts with a dream. There it is. Everything starts with a dream. Pick the one idea and promise me tomorrow you'll draw a line in the sand. It's not perfect, but you'll step over it. You'll get started. You'll talk about it. You'll solve those challenges that come, and you're going to commit. And we're going to see you speak here next year on TEDx, maybe, about your cool idea. Colin, it's been fantastic. Peace. Peace.